Rotator cuff tear classification. Is it a partial thickness tear or a full thickness tear? So let's take the full thickness tear that are divided by the size. A small size up till 1 cm, medium size 1 to 3 cm, large size 3 to 5 cm. Massive cuff tear means more than 5 cm or involve multiple tendons or tears with retraction to the glenoid. How about partial thickness tear that are divided into bursal or articular depending on the location and also divided by the size into less than 50% or more than 50% of the thickness. Partial tears are associated with internal impingement in overhead throwing athletes. They call it pasta. Usually affect the posterior cuff and it is partial articular surface tear, usually at the junction of supra and infraspinatus tendon insertion. The second classification is the anatomic classification. The supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor, they make up the majority of the tears. The mechanism is always degenerative tear in older patients, or if the patient have a shoulder dislocation and above the age of 40. But some of these tears can be traumatic in a younger patient with a high energy trauma. Now, subscapularis tears usually occur as an acute avulsion in younger patients after a fall with hyperabduction external rotation injury. It can also happen post-surgery due to failure of the repair. And usually it is due to excessive external rotation of the shoulder after surgery that involve repair of the subscapularis tendon. How about the time? The tear can be acute, less than three months, or chronic, longer than three months, or acute on chronic. A small tear becomes enlarged and becomes a bigger tear. Mechanism. The mechanism can be chronic degenerative, usually in older patients. It usually involves the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. It could also involve the superior part of the subscapularis tendon if the tear is large. The tear also can be an acute, traumatic, usually that involves the subscapularis tear, which is seen in young patients. Sometimes the acute traumatic is seen in patients with shoulder dislocation, if they are above the age of 40 years old. Sometimes it is iatrogenic by failure of the repair. So if you do shoulder surgery that involves repair of the subscapularis tendon and the patient does external rotation of the shoulder excessively, then he may tear that tendon. And it is very difficult to diagnose failure of that repair. Another classification is the fatty atrophy. Zero is normal. One will be some fatty streaks. Two, more muscle than fat. Three, equal amount of fat and muscle. Four, more fat than muscle. So we will call that fatty infiltration and atrophy of the muscle. MRI, especially in the sagittal plane, will reveal the retraction of the tendon and it will show the muscle atrophy and the fatty infiltration of the muscle and that can decide the timing and the coronacity of the tear. One important thing about the sagittal view you need to know your orientation of the muscles. Where the subscapularis, where the supraspinatus, 
Wear the Empress Pinatus and wear it the Tiris Minor and train yourself to be able to see that sagittal view and to mark the muscles. Another classification is the cuff tear shape. We will describe the tear and show how we can repair it. The first type is a crescent, which usually does not retract medially. It's mobile, so you can pull it laterally and you can repair it directly to the bone with very little tension. The second one is a U-shaped. It is similar to the shape of the crescent, but it goes further medially with the apex very close to the glenoid or even medial to it. So it would be good to change that U-shaped tear to a crescent tear. How do you do that? You do that by repair it side to side using margin conversions first. Then repair the remaining crescent part into the bone. How about the L-shaped? Similar to u shape, one of the leaves is more mobile than the other, so we're going to use margin conversions in the repair and then repair the rest to the bone. The whole idea for the U-shape and L-shape is to repair it without creating a lot of tension that can make the repair impossible or fail. The last type, it is massive and immobile. It may be longitudinal or it may be U-shaped. This massive contracted tear is difficult to repair and often requires an interval slide. Thank you for listening. I hope that was helpful.